Hey guys, so I'll be explaining what we what just happened in the recent clip, right? So basically we make a folder and we call it teleport locations. We make six parts of how many locations we want the player to teleport to. So if we say part one, the player will spawn in this location. We say part two, the player will spawn in this location. Part three, part four, part five, part six. The more parts we add into this folder is how many locations we're getting around the base plate. Or if we made another base plate, we can just make them spawn somewhere else. And you see we made this part, it can collide fall to anchored and it's not all the way on the ground so the player can spawn on the base plate and not bounce up from the base plate. So now time for the script right? And also in a uh, duplicated storage, we made our little, a little gate. So if I was to change the size of this to 0.577, this is our little gate. We're, doing, we're gonna tween the size inside the script so it turns like this. I'm just gonna put it back. So boom, basically let me just update this. So now time for the script. So into the script, we locate, we get our tween service of course, and then we get our info. So for the info, all we're doing is we're making the tween, it's gonna last two seconds long, we're making it sign, uh, we're using the stop. Uh, uh, if you don't know what sign is, you can look in the API reference, it would be very helpful. Uh, we, could, we could use anything else, sign. we can use linear or sign, anything's fine. And then we're, we're getting two tables, right? And the first table is going to be in our first tween. And we're going to use this to make the teleport pad to grow bigger. And in V3, we're using this one to make the size go back to its default size. So if you look inside properties on our, our teleport pad, we have 0, 0 0.05 as our X, Y, and Z. And now we're going to call a function. We're going to call uh, an event players added. And we're going to connect to a function. And we're going to run player through parameters. Every time the player join, uh, joins the game and now every time the player talks we're going to connect the function and we're going to run a message through the parameters and now we're going to make a loop right so now we're going to loop through the folder that we were talking about right so the folder side workspace right so game.workspace.teleportlocations and we're going to get the children because we want to get everything inside of the folder right do if the message and now we do if message lower so it's gonna make everything everything we say has to be lowercase so if we say like part one with the uppercase p it's not gonna work it has to be lowercase and if it's equal to the value so the value being part one part two part three part four etc name and the name is part one through four part one through six then we're gonna we're gonna make our animation and our we made our simple animation down in here all we did was all we did was make a, our, the player's hand just move up. Super simple. And now what we do, we locate, we locate the teleport pad, and then we clone the teleport pad so more than one person can use it at a time. And not it's not just it's not just one it's not just one using it over and over again, right? So everybody can use it. And then we set the player's walk speed and jump power to zero so they can't move during this action. And then we're gonna position, we're positioning the, the the teleport pad right under the player, basically, because we we wanted to we wanted to be on the bottom. We don't want it to be on top of us. We want to be like right under our feet so we can teleport, right? And we're gonna pair it to the workspace because if we keep it in replicated storage, we won't be able to see anything, right? And now we're gonna play the animation, so our little little snap hand animation, right? So. Every so now, we if you want, this is where you make uh, the player teleport, right? So, the teleport pad dot touch connect function hit, right? So what we do inside of here is that every time, if somebody hits it, it's gonna find if it's a humanoid, it's gonna find the first the first child humanoid, and if hit that parent's not equal to the character, so it's not so if we hit it, it's not gonna it's not gonna affect us. Then it's gonna move the player's position, so whoever hit it to whatever I said. So if I said part one, that position is gonna move us to to this position right here and the player if they step on it, right? And now we do tween one dot completed. So it's gonna wait until this tween is done. When the gate is finally open, it's gonna move It's gonna move me to that position that I said. So if I said part one, it's gonna move me to part one. We're gonna wait one. We're gonna make a new tween. 
seven variable, right? And this is gonna be our closing. So we're gonna make the, the teleport pad become smaller and so it just so it goes away. So that's where we that's where we use the the V3 table because we're using a 0 0.05. So we make it really small and then we just and then it's just gone, right? So that so we're gonna plate as well because we also want we want it to because we want to play in the same line, we're trying to minimize the amount of lines we have. And then we're going to change the player's walk speed and jump power back to normal. And that's basically all you have to do. And now if we were to play this game right now, uh, editor's note, uh, what you want to uh, when you complete the twin, you want to destroy the pad. So the pad doesn't just stay in the workspace. So it doesn't stay in the workspace after you're done using the, after you're done using the, the after you're done teleporting, right? So you want to destroy it. So that was the editor's note.